Since 2006, I have represented the Party for the Animals in the Dutch Parliament and I strive to put an end to these kind of practices. But my work doesn't just stop at animal welfare. It's only recently that the Dutch Environmental Agency has sounded the alarm at the speed at which we are exhausting the earth and its resources. The Netherlands uses four times its own surface area to produce what we consume. Think of it like a buffet. We are heaping up our plates with enough food to feed four people, which means that there will be not enough left for those at the back of the queue. One billion people on our planet suffer from obesity, while elsewhere, one billion people go to bed hungry every night. Something is seriously askew, and we should really talk about it. Right now, half of the total global wheat harvest is used as livestock feed to support our meat and dairy consumption. Half of the entire harvest, while at the same time people in poor countries are starving. And there doesn't seem to be an end to this. We keep on consuming more and more and more, and in the future we'll have to exploit other people's natural resources even more than we do now. And this will be at the expense of those people. Clean water, clean air and also our environment. So let me sum this up for you. Scientists say that it simply takes far more land and energy to produce animal protein than plant-based ones. To produce animal products, you need up to 10 times as much land as needed to produce vegetable products. And this is due to the fact that all this land is needed to produce feed for these billions of farm animals. Films like An Inconvenient Truth have made a very important contribution to the debate on global warming. Yet the only cow that I saw on screen symbolized little else picture-perfect youth in Tennessee. In the whole inconvenient truth, not a single word was said about livestock farming or the impact of this polluting industry. Dr. Steinfeld, how is it possible that livestock doesn't play a role in the discussion about global warming? Well, I think that uh, the fact is that uh, in the climate change discussion, much of the focus is on carbon dioxide. And the carbon dioxide emissions, if you look at the livestock sector, only make up about one-third of the total greenhouse gas emissions. Nitrous oxides and methane don't come very strongly into the debate, but they are uh, much more uh, potent in terms of greenhouse gases than carbon dioxide, and they need to be factored in. But Al Gore didn't say one single word about the livestock industry in his documentary. What do you think? Didn't you miss the aspect as well? Uh, it is certainly missing. Uh, the entire aspect of food is missing. And I think uh, everyone needs to know that uh, food and agriculture uh, contributes to climate change and has environmental impact. And uh, one needs to make choices if one wants uh, to be environmentally friendly that are in line with uh, the environmental impact of producing various types of food. Well, I think he should have said something about it. Have you ever tried to convince him? Well, I, I'm not uh, someone who knows Al Gore personally. Uh, I think that uh, at my level, uh, publishing results and uh, talking at conferences and talking to the media, such as in this case, is all I can do. Well, thank you. He doesn't know it either. So I went to the United States to find an answer to this question. Unfortunately, Al Gore was busy, but I did manage to speak to some other people who had quite a bit to say on the subject. Yeah, you look great. Hello. Hi. Hi. Some information? Thank you. Have a nice day. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Nice, nice to, meet to meet you finally. You. Yeah. Yeah, you do such great work. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Having a good time. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing here? Well, we're the out here trying to show people that if they're eating meat, 
They're engaging in the number one most environmentally destructive behavior they could engage in and uh, showing people that rather than cars and trucks and SUVs, even rather than planes, meat is the number one cause of global warming. Do people believe that when you tell them? People are shocked to find out. We hear so much about cars and trains and planes and energy, yeah. and people don't realize that it's actually the meat on their plate that's causing uh, global warming rather than the car that they're driving even. Get you some information here? Thank you. Thank you. How's it going? There you go, check that out when you get a chance. Thank you. Check that out, thank you. We use this catchy phrase, climate change. It's uh, really just a way to grab attention and get people to look in our direction mm -hmm. long enough for us to give them a leaflet and explain the issue a little bit further. Oh, okay. And uh, get them to go home wondering, how is it that meat causes global warming, rather than wondering uh, what's on television tonight or what am I going to have for dinner tonight? Hey there. One of these. Thank you. Saying that power plants are the number one cause of global warming is like saying that humans are the number one cause of global warming. Power plants don't emit energy, don't create energy for the purpose of just creating energy for the sake of it. They create it for industries. And one of the industries that uses the most energy is factory farming. All right. In the U.S., the meat industry uses about one-third of all the fossil fuels that we generate. Headquarters of People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, in short, PETA. They have almost two million members and are active worldwide. I love this one as well. Oh, yes. This is very famous one. We've got this. I suspect that for Al Gore and for a lot of other people, it's just too inconvenient of a truth. Gore was a politician and is beholden to a lot of industry people in, in uh, many, many different industries, probably in the meat industry too. And uh, while he certainly has done admirable work, it's disheartening to say the least that he has continued to ignore the fact that the meat he's eating every night for dinner is the number one cause of global warming. I'm Alicia Silverstone, and I'm a vegetarian. There's nothing in the world that's changed me as much as this. I feel so much better and have so much more energy. It's so amazing. There's a prominent environmental group in the U.S. called Environmental Defense, and they recently wrote on their website that if every American replaced chicken with vegetarian foods in just one meal per week, it'd be the equivalent uh, in carbon dioxide of taking about 500,000 cars off of U.S. roads. Here in the United States, big is beautiful. This applies to the cars and definitely to the steaks. The average American eats 124 kilos of meat a year, 44 more kilos than the average Dutchman. 